I think everybody is in. We can start. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm uh, believer of uh, open source and, and sharing uh, not just uh, knowledge about code, but also about how we can run our businesses better, uh, how we can run our businesses more sustainable, uh, how we can all, you know, earn some good money. Um, so we've been on a journey with Open Social for three, almost four years now, and um, I would love to share a little bit of our experience there. I'll try to jam all these uh, years into 15 minutes and questions, so please come see me afterwards um, if there's anything I haven't talked about. Um, there's, there will be a lot, uh, a lot more. Um, and we have a booth uh, downstairs. So for those who do not know me, uh, my name is Taco, that's really my name, not a nickname. It's a Dutch name. Uh, Dutch people are a little crazy. Um, Co-founder of Gold Gorilla in uh, 2008, and we started the Open Social Project in, in 2016. Uh, I've been on the board of the Dutch uh, Drupal Association, so many familiar faces here. Very happy to see that. And uh, yeah, since last night, we, uh, we can announce we are winner of the International Splash Awards. So if you think I look much better on the picture than in real life, that's because we had a really good night. And, uh, <laughs> I told my team, I think that last bottle of wine was too much. And they said, well, actually, you got shots after that. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains why I felt so bad this morning. But it was great. Um, so yeah, very happy to see the Splash Awards now in 10 countries uh, once we started it here in the Netherlands. So uh, good stuff. So yeah, most of, uh, most of you know us as uh, Gold Gorilla. That's the, the, we've been uh, 12 years active in the Drupal community under this name. And yesterday, if you've not seen the announcement, we announced that we're actually dropping the Gold Gorilla brand and we're only being uh, known as Open Social from, uh, from now on, uh, onwards. So it's very exciting uh, for us um, to continue under this uh, new name and it also speaks for the success of the project that we uh, do not work uh, on any other Drupal project anymore other than Open Social projects. Uh, and I'll tell a little bit more about that journey because uh, it was quite a journey and still is. So every time I, I talk to investors or I talk to entrepreneurs, uh, they always say moving to a product company is really, really difficult. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, if I had a euro for every time I heard that, I would be uh, very rich by now. Um, you know, but okay, why is it so hard? And um, I, I thought, you know, how hard can it be? Um, and we've, uh, we've uh, found the last uh, three years uh, to be quite challenging. So I think it's good to share those experience so you guys can learn from it. And I'll try to drive home a few points that I think are very important that I, I wish somebody would, you know, stress me about when we started the whole thing. Um, you know, it's a simplified presentation, so don't pin me down on this is not our only company goals, but for today, uh, <laughs> this is the most important thing. So, who of you have a Drupal shop or a Drupal agency doing hourly rate work? So, yeah, and, and who does doing products already? A few, well, yeah, if, you do, if you're very successful in products, you don't need to come to the session. Who of you is doing uh, services and do want to make a product or is building a product? Or uh, So pretty much everybody that has a service company uh, wants to do products, and, and that's also what we, are, uh, we were doing. I gave some other talks about you know, why we moved to, the, to this direction, so uh, look at those. I'll not go into details, but again, at the booth, I'd love to talk more about it. But, you know, that the services, you need to sell hours. So a client comes to you and says, look, we have this problem, fix it for me. You, you said, yes, we can fix anything, right? And the scope doesn't matter. You, you know, you just have a huge budget, we'll sell hours. Uh, and if you do, do this correctly, you make some, uh, some good revenue and you keep some profit. That's the very simple business model. Um, but in a new model, um, you really need to do one thing and do one thing well, it's maximize recurring revenue. Every time I talk to investors, they want to see your KPIs, but this is the one they want to see, recurring revenue. They don't really care about your selling hours, you're doing a lot of development work, design work. It's all about maximizing recurring revenue. And that's a really different business model, and it's really hard to get that right. Um, and I'll show you a bit of data on, on how we're growing into that. Um, so again, the business model is changing, and also what is really tough in this is that your whole uh, financial system is changing. So what I also didn't realize that it's very comfortable to sell projects because we ask uh, an upfront payment. You know, most of us do this now, 10, 20, 25% sometimes. This is great, so you can pay your salaries and then you build a few months and then you either build a project and you get the money 
or usually now we do agile development so you sell the, the hours every month and it's great because you get the money you pay the salaries you pay your, your office cost and well you know that's done so you really get the work uh, done and the payment up front but in a new situation you're selling a product you first need to build the product and then you start selling it so you only get money after you build the product so it's a completely different way um, and that causes some uh, some problems so here if you have a 50k project you know you get the 10k up front you get a few months of work you get another 20k and you're done right but if you build a product and we're selling this for a thousand euro a month um, this is really good, but I only get a thousand euro from one client and another thousand and another thousand um, And we can do this for 36 months or 48 months and in the end it's you know, the same amount of money But I get it only in years later and this causes a lot of a problem because you need to bridge that gap um, And if you're a service company, you don't even realize this right so you can start like us from our from our uh, dormitory you don't need to be, make big investments but we do with products also for for in my experience uh, marketing and sales is quite easy you know we do the marketing people come to us with their problems we offer all these great services and we start selling you know the dream <laughs> um, and the client loves your portfolio you know you don't need to show the work you're like okay we can do it we can do it on time we can do it on budget and the client needs to trust you and that you can get the work done and usually they do because you have a great reputation um, so your marketing and sales is quite cheap but when you sell your product it's really hard because the product is already there you know and your competitors are also there as well with their products so you need to sell something you cannot sell the dream you actually need to sell the product and there's no way around saying oh we can we can add that or change that no the product is what you're selling in the moment uh, and it's really expensive to get these clients so usually for business to business SaaS one year payment is like a good amount that means if you ask a thousand euro a month getting a client costs you about twelve thousand euros in marketing and sales expense and you pay this up front right so every client you get you, you pay first marketing and sales then the client starts paying a monthly fee and then maybe in the in the, in the second year or in the third year you're starting making some money um, and this is really hard because that means you need a lot of money up front and even if you're more successful onboarding getting the clients on board you start paying more money um, and this is something that we kind of knew but we didn't re uh, uh, realize so we, we at first invested a lot in the product and they're like okay now we need to sell it oh okay we need marketing campaigns and we need a sales team and we don't really have the money for that so how are we going to do that and that's really hard because then you're in this circle where it's very hard to get out of because you need to start selling the product more otherwise you cannot invest back in the product and it's hard to break the circle um, so again say you know in the old situation you get um, 25k a month you pay the salary and it's all good but in a new situation maybe you have four clients they all pay 4,000 uh, euros a month which is great you know I mean it's still good but you only get 4,000 and how do you pay your salaries and how do you pay your office cost um, and, and this is like really something that is difficult and you need to you need to think about this up front so just driving at home how do you invest in your building your products uh, getting your core team out there you want to have a big core team you know develop back-end developers front-end designers testers a big team but they're not doing any billable work for you still you need to pay the, the salaries um, so how do you do that then again, spend a lot of uh, money on marketing and sales. We have some really good examples of companies here like Acquia, Pantheon, Platform Sage. You know, you've seen their sales and marketing efforts and teams, right? That's really what, they, what they're good at. Uh, but they also need to do this in order to be successful. And then we need to balance this with the revenue that comes maybe years later. Um, and usually when, when we talk about startups and the financials, and it's very sexy to talk about the last period in this graph like okay you know this company got 10 million investment and oh they're doing great and this is really good for news and it gets us all excited um, but actually the first part of this graph the value of death is where most companies 70 80 percent never get out of um, and, and, and why is that and why is there so little focus on that because here this line down you need to build your product um, you need to pay your office still keep doing this in the meantime uh, you need to get this marketing and sales on board and also run your traditional service company at the same time um, and, and that's why it's also called the valley of death because most companies they do not get out of it either they cannot get their product to market 
or they can get the product to market, but they've you know forgot to invest in marketing and sales. People are not buying it, and they have to switch back to the service model just to get to pay the bills. And this is a big danger, and it's also uh, something we had to do in the past um, because we couldn't you know pay the salaries. Uh, so we had to switch back to our old agency model in order to pay the bills and get some non-recurring revenue and do some different projects. And before you know it, you're back in doing agency work and you're stuck in that. Um, so we did it a little bit different. Um, we use 200,000 euro in crowdfunding. Um, we have 150 investors, maybe some of them are here. Um, we also spent about 300,000 euros that we already earned in the years uh, leading up to the project. Uh, and, and with that, we set a team apart to make sure we could build the product um, and, and use the entire year to fund that. But that only got us through uh, to 2016 and the product was in beta. Okay, and, and, and then, you know, um, how are you going to balance your, your agency work uh, and then moving to the product phase? So this is pretty much what, um, what that looked like. So you can see the, the blue was uh, 2016. We were doing agency work. I call it yeah, Call Gorilla. Um, and then what we really want to do is drive that purple. You know, the purple is the recurring revenue. Um, so you can see in 2016, we're starting to do a little bit, uh, but we also were doing a lot of non-recurring uh, non revenue uh, for open social. So our goal has always been to slowly turn the agency around. It's like a, like an oil tanker sometimes, um, and, and try to grow that, uh, recurring revenue. So that's the subscription model, the SaaS fee. Um, which is really the thing that they should be focusing on. But we also need the non-recurring revenue, just to pay the bills, just to get you know everybody uh, happy. And what we did was just, uh, we used a lot of the non-recurring open social revenue to funnel back into open social. Um, so I'll show you a little bit about extensions that we built for the product. So what we tried to do was, okay, you know, we can do some services for you, some extra development, but only if it is helping open social forward. So um, this year we are um, doing like one third uh, recurring, one third uh, non-recurring, and still one third of uh, Gold Gorilla. Uh, and uh, early next year we will completely shutting down Gold Gorilla projects and only do open social projects. It's still exciting. Um, so uh, you know we have, we have to really focus on uh, driving the sales. Um, but for us, it's been really successful in order to you know funnel the work that we do for Gold Gorilla, funnel the service work for Open Social back into building Open Social and building this recurring revenue project. Uh, but that does mean you need to double your uh, SaaS uh, sales every year, and that's a lot of effort, and that takes a lot of investment in marketing and sales. Um, so yeah, we're talking to investors about uh, uh, speeding this up a little bit, uh, but I cannot tell you more about that now. Um, are we on time? Yeah, pretty good. So um, I just want to want to drive on five points. What is really hard is to change your company DNA, but you have to change it um, because the whole mindset of us in a service company is the client is king. We want to sell ours, so everything that they come up with, you know, a new design, uh, you know, a new feature, in the end, we'll do it for them. A migration, an integration, and and we do this very diverse. Uh, and we have to because you know we can build on these hours and it's it's uh, it's good for us. But now you're selling a product, you know, so you need to stop thinking about okay, how can I sell hours to the client and and start really thinking how can I sell this product? And that's really hard for us as service companies because it's not in our mindset. And it took us also three four years to start changing this, not just for me but also the whole uh, developer team, for example, and the project managers. Um, so this is the pricing point, the pricing page of, uh, of Open Social. Um, and we're really focusing now on this basic and, and premium uh, tiers. Uh, basic is fully automated, so you can just install it. Uh, it takes a few minutes uh, and then you get an email. Your Open Social installation is ready. You pay it by credit card. We have a Stripe integration. So this is really a SaaS product built on Drupal, fully automated deployments, fully automated updates. Um, and um, you know you can get up and running quite fast without any technical knowledge. Uh, and then we have a premium version, and that's the one that we can enable extensions with. So we have a very cool extension pages like uh, e-core, uh, e-learning courses module, uh, collaboration feature, office integration, single sign-on. But we only enable them in the premium package because the basic package should be you know you can get up and running fast, pay a very low monthly fee. But if you want a little bit more, if your project is successful, if you're ambitious, then please move to the premium package. Uh, so the premium is really our focus. 
it's not fully automated yet. Uh, we currently have to turn features on and off uh, by hand. Uh, next year we are investing in making sure that also the entire process of turning extensions on and off is automated. Uh, but that will be uh, quite a big project still to do. And then we have the last uh, tier that we call the enterprise tier. Um, that starts about six, seven thousand euro a month. And there we can do a little bit more in terms of integrations or migrations or customization. But even in that tier, that last one is really um, important to sometimes say no, because you're going to get requests that will try to pull you back into that agency work. Like, oh, we want to have open social integrated with e-commerce. And for us, it's not on our roadmap. It's very difficult to do. So we just have to sell no at that point. And even though it could be a great project. Uh, so you have to make sure that even in that last year, you don't move into that direction because the money seems good and easy. But if you do it, then you'll turn into an agency again. Um, so we have to sell uh, no in that uh, in that year. And we just have like three clients that are pretty good fits uh, with Open Social, uh, and they do a little bit more with complex integrations. <clears throat> um, then your clients are going to come to you and say, oh, we want this feature, we want this extension or this uh, customization. And your, your initial reaction is going to be, yes, we're going to do it because that's what you've been trained to do. Yes, we can help this client. We want to be very helpful. Um, but we actually needed to learn to say no, like first say, no, I don't think we can do that. That should be your first response. And only if, if you know you've talked about it with your team, you think this is really helpful for other clients, then you can start doing it. And then we always try to make this into a separate extension for open social. So we have this extension page. Um, not all of these modules are open source. Um, and this is something that we can then sell to other clients again. So for example, now we're building the Office 365 uh, integration. Um, that will be an extension for open social that we can resell to all the other open social clients, driving your monthly recurring revenue growth. Um, so that's a very different model than that we used to, where we just use one-off projects for clients. But for us, really, um, it's really important now that every extension that we make is able to be turned off and on and can be uh, used to drive this monthly recurring revenue growth. And that often means that we invest a lot in the feature, so the client pays a little bit and we invest uh, a lot ourselves to build the feature so we can then uh, drive the uh, recurring revenue growth. And that's also something that uh, is a bit counterintuitive for, for us. Um, this recurring revenue is it's, it's a little bit of a fight sometimes with your clients, um, especially when you're like in non-profit uh, or government agencies because they like to do projects and their, their budgets are project based. So they have 100k for a project and they really don't want to sign a contract that says, you know, the, pro the, the initial cost is only 10k but you're going to pay a thousand euro a month for the next years. They don't like it, uh, it doesn't fit in their model. Um, for profit businesses, they usually love it, so because you know they, it's not their problem, they can just move the cost ahead. Um, but you really need to be careful with uh, the non-profits and governments, and it doesn't really fit in their business model. Uh, but again, if you don't do it, um, your, your recurring revenue growth, which should be your main KPI for investors internally as well, is not growing fast enough. So we're actually fighting a lot more for this. Uh, sometimes a bit of give and take, especially big organizations like United Nations, it's really hard to fit in there. Uh, but still, we can sometimes uh, uh, drive the recurring revenue when you know we offer additional services or something like that. Um, so try fighting for that and try to limit these services, the, the development, the design. You should really try not to do that much, um, which is something that we had to learn the hard way. We we built some sites in the in the early days of open social that were very customized for the clients. Clients were really happy, and now it takes like 30, 40 hours to do an update on these projects because they're too custom. Uh, and they're not paying these 30, 40 hours because we agreed on a fixed SaaS fee, so we have to actually uh, um, invest those hours ourselves, which is not very really sustainable. Um, yeah, this is the graph I'm obsessed with. This is our recurring revenue growth. Um, you know, this is all in spreadsheets uh, still, but uh, we're moving to a, a CRM tool. So early this year we were at 20K and we're going to 50K uh, recurring revenue this year. Uh, and, and that's my main focus just to drive that growth constantly and I'm, I'm obsessed about it and you should as well. Um, and this is something in, in, our, in our previous days as an agency, just looking at hosting revenues and, and support contracts, it wasn't even close to this. Uh, and this is nice because this money will come in in the years to come and um, there's not a lot of, of work uh, that needs to be done. This is just updating, keeping the sites uh, uh, up and running. Um, 
what we always wanted to do is build the product first, get the first clients, uh, show that people are happy with the product and then talk to investors. I think we should have done it earlier because the company's really been stressed in the last uh, years because we had to drive the revenue for the old business, get the clients for open social, which I'm showing you is really hard to, to invest in marketing and sales. Um, so we've been trying to squeeze uh, every euro uh, where we could and uh, we're very lucky that, that we have a team that believes in open social and that's also willing to invest you know, their time and effort in it. Um, but I think in hindsight, we should have gone to investors earlier. So make an investment plan uh, and start talking to them early, earlier. Even if they're saying no, they'll give you some advice how you should restructure your business or how you should focus on different KPIs. Um, so probably even before you want to build your project, just go out to investors. And if they all say no, then maybe there's something wrong with your business plan. Um, <laughs> But do keep in mind that you know this is a, a multi-stage investment. So if you're going to talk to investors and they're going to ask you, is your company going to be worth like one billion in five years? The answer should be yes. And if you're like, well, I don't know, um, you know, they're probably not going to invest. So you have to think big uh, and and be ready to go through all these steps. If you're going to go to VCs, you're going to ask for money. That means you need to do a next round and a next and a next and the next one. Acquia is a really good example of this. Uh, you need to go through all the steps and you need to be prepared for that and your team needs to be prepared for that. Um, we really had to change our marketing and, and sales approach. I use a model that's uh, uh, winning by design. Uh, it's, called, it's a website that has really excellent books as well. Um, and for us, changing the, the whole marketing flow and also changing sales teams and account management and building customer success teams was super important. Um, so, so normally when uh, we work with project managers or account managers, but when our sites are up and running, we don't tend to care that much about our clients anymore. Why? Because you know they already paid the bills and maybe in three, four years their, their project needs an update. But when you pay a SaaS fee and it's a monthly contract, you really need to make sure your client is happy all the time because otherwise they'll switch the contract. Um, so 50% of your sales effort should go to getting the clients and another 50% of your sales effort should go to keeping the clients and, and making sure they're happy, making sure they can use more extensions uh, so you can drive your MRR growth. So we're using this model and we're actually hiring now customer success managers uh, and also um, market development representatives to make sure we, could, we do the demos correctly, we do the chat online. So a lot of effort is going into sales and marketing and that was a big learning for us because yeah, I think in the agency work, traditionally we're not that good uh, in getting uh, 10, 20 leads a day um, on our website. And last but not least, um, keep your team on board because uh, this is a big journey. We've pictured it to take three years. We're now four years in and we asked a lot of patience and we asked a lot of investment from the, for, from the team. Um, and I think having an open conversation with them, making sure that they understand the risks uh, is very important. So that was the last thing. I uh, just want to say that we have a booth uh, downstairs. Please come visit us. We'll give you a demo of the distribution or uh, show you our SaaS product. And on Thursday we have a summit which is free to uh, visit. Uh, so you can go to let's.getopensocial.com um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, have this conversation and uh, continue to learn from uh, the journey that we have and hopefully you guys will do as well. Thank you for the time. Do I have time for one question? Sure, one question. One, one question. <laughs> Anyone? Okay, I guess uh, we'll see you at the booth then. <laughs> okay, thanks.